Hello and welcome back and that is right. Today we want to talk about the subject of what to do after Drobo. I'll be straight with you. This is a video that's been on my to-do list probably for more than a year and it's only been certain changing events with the company Drobo that have necessitated this video suddenly jumping up my to-do pile and that is um, at the end of June 2022 the company filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Now, what that means is the company was effectively saying we didn't have the money in the bank. It's so much more complex than that. And some sources have highlighted that Drobo do intend to continue. But of course, I'm going to have to reshape and redefine a lot of their brand. But the last 12 to 18 months, when it comes to being someone that's either been considering a Drobo or owns a Drobo and contacted the brand, it's been very slim pickings across a number of different fields and many people have either been jumping away from the Drobo uh, ship entirely or have been questioning the necessity of buying their products for a while. And although I used to talk about Drobo quite a lot here on the channel, you know, hell, they were one of the earliest brands that I talked about here on NAS Compares, it has to be said that we've not heard much from them from a long in a long time and if their social media is anything to go by, they have seen certain restructurings, they have highlighted that production Production was heavily affected during the pandemic for them, during coronavirus outbreaks, uh, uh, production facilities out in the east, although I would argue they were having production and supply difficulties long before the pandemic hit, but never mind. And today's video, I want to talk to people that are either been considering a Drobo and are wondering what else there is out there, or are owners of Drobo and now looking at an alternative solution. Maybe they're an upgrade point or that you know the support they've been getting from Drobo has not been to their liking and therefore they want to jump ship. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on four main NAS brands. So if you were looking at this video for Thunderbolt storage, this isn't really going to be for you, although I'll try to chuck some of that in throughout. But if you were a Drobo NAS owner or considering owning it, I'm going to tell you, based on this, the Drobo 5N2, which has got a bunch of features that I quite like, some of which have still never been replicated on another brand, I might add. And I'm going to recommend to you the current NAS from Synology, QNAP, Acer Store, and TerraMaster that you should consider when coming off the back of a Drobo. Because I can be, I'll be straight with you, all of those brands give you more in terms of hardware and software than Drobo anyway. So regardless of which one of those four brands you go for, you are going to get a product with better hardware and more fully featured software than Drobo. But it's a case of what you need to go for. So again, I'm basing it on this five bay Drobo, but most of the points I'm going to make today can be uniformly applied to the eight bay NAS or that iSCSI box they did or older generation NASs as well. So the first brand we're going to talk about is Synology. What is the Synology that you, either a potential or ex-Drobo owner, should be looking at? Okay, so in 2022, if you are a Drobo owner or not looking at getting a Drobo and want to know what Synology I've got on offer, right now I would most certainly recommend these two NASs. This one here is the DS920 that came out in 2020 and is still kicking quite a lot of ass. And this is the 1522 that arrived in June 2022 and has got some real flexibility and changes up in how the brand has approached hardware that some Drobo owners might be interested in. Now, what have Synology got that Drobo offer? One of of the most obvious things and one of the main areas that people have compared them in the early days was a flexible RAID system. Synology arrived with Synology Hybrid RAID. That is a RAID configuration unlike traditional RAIDs where you need to have the same drives. With the Synology platform you and SHR, you can mix and match the drives. Does that sound something like something similar to you? That's right. Drobo Beyond RAID. That was exactly what Drobo Beyond RAID was. So if you were someone that was opting for the Drobo brand there for simplicity, for utilization and ease in Mac environments, and you were looking for a very user-friendly system that had that flexible RAID system, then a Synology is definitely going to be one of the solutions that you're going to be interested in. Alongside that, much like Drobo's having that little caching bay there that was a little MSATA, MSATA SSD, modern generation Synologies for the most part arrive with M2 NVMe caching base there on the base of the system. They allow you to improve a lot of the performance thanks to SSD caching there. Now, Synology's platform 
is the best for software, hands down. Of all the brands I'm going to talk about today, they are by far the best. DSM 7.1 gives you the works. Everything, um, uh, collaboration suite, alternative applications that can rival the like of Skype, WhatsApp, uh, Microsoft Office 365, Google Docs, um, you name it. Synology have got an app for it, along with other tools for virtual machines, uh, surveillance, and more. And with applications that uh, that can rival the likes of Plex Media Server and MB, all rolled in to the Synology platform there. So again, if you're moving away from Drobo and you're looking for something at a similar price point to their 5 and 8 bay NAS systems, the 920 knocks around for about 5 to 550, and the 1522 knocks around for about 6 to 700 nicker, depending on where you are in the world. These are the ones I'd recommend for you. Now, if you were looking at QNAP, we're moving away from Drobo, it's going to be about the hardware. QNAP are giving you some of the best hardware in the market, both in the default model and in its scalability later on. Although they do not have a flexible RAID configuration, as we mentioned earlier on, that's comparable to Beyond RAID, what it does have is an enormous degree of scalability in hardware, from expansion devices to PCIe upgrades to add 10 gigabit Ethernet, as well as um, the majority of their systems now arriving with default 2.5 GBE. Now, I would recommend if you're coming away from Drobo and you're looking for something at a similar price point level, um, two different NAS families. I would recommend the new TS64 series. So there's the 264, the 464, and the 664 in two, four, and six bay NAS configurations. And these arrive with a Celeron processor up to 16 gig of memory, depending on how you want to scale it. It also has those M2 NVMe slots for caching, but you can also use those slots for raw storage too. There's also HDMI out and overall this is a fantastic NAS there. I will highlight though that right now at the time of recording availability of the TS464 as it's literally just been released in the last month and a half depending on where you are in the world the result is that stock isn't that big and around there but if you are looking for something that's available then I recommend the 53D series. This came out in 2020, and again, I would have the unit on the table, but right now this is being used over there in another test just out of shot. And the 653, the 453, and the 253D at the moment are arriving at a very interesting price point because they've been around for a couple of years, and because the follow up is just arriving, you can grab yourself a bloody good deal. And that system there has pretty much everything that I just described with this system, with the exception of those NVMe bays, but it does have PCI upgradability, an Intel CPU you and all of the 2.5 GPU USB upgrades you name it now on top of that you've got QTS which although isn't quite as user friendly as the Synology platform it's pretty user friendly and it also arrives with a larger degree of support of third party applications and services a much more open-ended design for you to really craft the storage that you want rather than be told you have to work this particular way and with loads of firmware updates and lots of applications being added all the time with a little bit more of a focus towards rather than creating their own alternative applications but creating apps that run with existing services it's probably the system that you're going to be able to customize and configure a great deal more to your own individual data storage needs Now, if you're moving away from Drobo and you were looking at a brand that you're looking for that user friendliness that I mentioned earlier on, but not the expensive price point and somewhere in the middle of hardware and software, then Acer Store is probably going to have you back there. They do arrive with some still very impressive hardware and on top of that, support of things like BTRFS and a constantly evolved and upgraded software. They have changed a lot over the last few years, although you know three to four years ago they did seem to have more of a loosey-goosey policy on the applications on their software ADM things have been tightened up exponentially with newer uh, versions and firmware updates of their software arriving a lot tighter arriving with much more closed system in terms of the other applications included and very very impressive hardware being rolled into a lot of their NASes now again Unlike Synology and QNAP there, Asus Door NASes seem to arrive at a much better price point for the hardware with a lot of those software services including, again, including BTRFS, much like the Synology. If you are thinking of moving towards the Asus Door platform, I would recommend you go between these two systems here. This is the Locker Store series. Currently, there is a Gen 2 version of the Locker Store, meaning the previous generation is getting even more affordable with a quad-core Intel Celeron-based processor inside, DDR4 memory as well, 2.5 GB 
NVMe and a 4K output there on the rear, as well as M2 NVMe SSD bays inside, it is a very, very well-equipped system, which will hugely overshadow the likes of what you've been utilizing in Drobo up to this point. Alternatively, if you want to get even more economical but want most of the features I just described, you need to look at the Drive Store series from them, arriving with a Realtek ARM or ARM based processor, which again, if you've been using a Drobo, newsflash, you've been using ARM processors this whole time, arrives with a much higher um, generation Realtek ARM processor than the one found in that 32-bit, 64-bit, along with DDR4 memory pre-soldered, 2.5 GPE inside and support of BTRFS. What I'm saying is, if you were moving away from Drobo and you wanted to keep things still a little bit cost-effective, Acer Store most certainly have the best range of more affordable solutions out there in the market while still providing you with a number of the features and services from the likes of the bigger guns in the market like Synology and QNAP. And finally on to Terra Master there. Now these are by far the most affordable budget end of the market right now if you're moving away from Drobo. Now normally by with that I would say oh avoid it cheap nasty ugh, but it has to be said that Terra Master despite that price tag is giving you a hell of a lot these days notwithstanding the newest generation devices like the 423 that I would recommend arriving with 2.5 GBE 10 gigabit USB ports there on the rear, M2 NVMe slots, and a newer generation Intel Celeron processor inside. But with that, their latest version of their software, TOS 5, that was released a couple of months ago, arrives with an AI-powered photo recognition tool, surveillance tool inside, as well, allowing you to attach IP cameras around your home or business environment. There's also support of BTRFS and a support of a fluid RAID system, again, beyond RAID, T-RAID, they have that flexible RAID system. You can attach expansion devices. There are multimedia apps in there, office applications, um, PC backup, cloud synchronization and backup, USB backups, the range of tools via that graphical user interface that's like an OS in the web browser, despite its more affordable price tag, is still gonna be pretty impressive for you, especially when you're coming off the back of Drobo with its relatively basic storage management portal that you may have used up until this point. Now. With Terra Master, I would most certainly recommend the, uh, recommend the 43 series, which is uh, the 2022 generation that's slowly getting fleshed out. Alternatively, I would recommend maybe looking at some of the previous 422 and 421 generation as they become more available. And again, some of those arriving with 10 gig of Ethernet and some of them arriving with a lot of different solutions in terms of Thunderbolt RAID as well in some of their DAS platform uh, solutions as well and indeed if you were someone coming into this looking for an alternative to the Thunderbolt um, RAID systems from Drobo then I would most certainly recommend looking at some of uh, QNAP Thunderbolt NAS systems which may be a bit pricey but give you a little balance of both or if you want to go for a more affordable RAID enabled Thunderbolt system in DAS direct attached storage Terra Master have got a bunch of two four eight and bigger Thunderbolt RAID systems as well as rack mount Thunderbolt RAID systems as well. And that's really it. Those are some of the solutions I would recommend from Synology, QNAP, Acer Store and Terra Master when moving away from the Drobo platform. Now, let's be straight about this. It's still, they're still not out for the count. Right now, they are still saying online that they intend to keep moving forward with their business and maybe have a more limited portfolio or a smaller range of solutions. Also, I think we have to give some respect to Drobo here. There was a number of things that their brand brought to the table that either other NAS brands never were able to emulate or they were giving birth to a better understanding of how people like to enjoy their stories at least in the mac environments that other brands managed to take and maybe improve upon in a way that drobo could have you know reinvested some of that time things like their intelligent led system for those that have ever used the drobo there was this great range of using the leds that denoted how full the system was something i've never seen any other brand include they were one of the first brands to include m2 SSDs for caching. They weren't NVMe, but having that little module inside there that allowed you to add that SSD inside to improve your performance much more easily and in a quite user-friendly fashion, I'd not seen before. Then, when we look at the rear of the device, yes, they've got lag, everyone's got lag, but what this system also has is an internal 
battery, something that I've since only ever seen one brand provide, and that was Thecus. The idea that this system had a battery, and still does, inside, in the event of the power being pulled out, there was a small battery inside there that allowed the system to safely shut down and then not corrupt any active read or write operations, something I wish, wish, wish more brands included. And again, we've seen the evolution of that in active, 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 pass uh, passive setups, but still never as streamlined as it was in the Drobo. So I think it's important that we at least acknowledge that although Drobo may have fallen you know from its pedestal somewhat over the last few years they did bring a lot to the party and i sincerely hope this isn't the last time i'm going to talk about drobo here on the channel it may well be and if it is so be it but they were and hopefully hopefully might still be a good brand if they can turn things around but otherwise this has been what to do after drobo for you and your story. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this or have any questions, then do head into the comments and let me know. Oh, I would strongly recommend using the free advice section linked in the description over to NAS Compares. It's a free advice service we use to recommend different solutions and the right solution for most people. We know how much a techie costs to hire. Why not use the free one? If you want to support us, there's donate, but you know, use it, ignore it. It's up to you. Otherwise, click like if you've enjoyed the video. Subscribe to learn more as we talk more and more about data storage every single day with a video. And I will see you next time.